particular session of this the wheel of the experience uh, centricity, we will be talking about the link between the employee experience and the customer experience. Uh, then these uh, CX reflects employee experience uh, uh, to be customer centric, be employee centric first, uh, linking people centricity to business success, uh, benefits of an employee centric culture, how to foster an employee centric culture, the three wheel framework of the customer centricity, uh, then the customer ex experience strategies are long term investments, the five steps to become the experience centric, the structure of the experience centric uh, organization and then research paper and the references that we will be discussing in this particular session. Uh, first, uh, we have to understand the link between the employee experience and the customer experience. A customer's experience with an organization only as good as an employee's experience uh, and the business leader should know that the empathy is a key to employee and the customer success is there because that is creating an experience for the customers. Uh, the link between the employee experience and customer experience is that uh, a successful organization that depends on the positive customer experience uh, which uh, starts with it is the first customer it is as an employees. So, many customer centric organizations have found that customer experience success by putting the employees first uh, rather than the customers. So, this customer experience um, often reflects how the organizations employees feel about their work uh, so satisfied and supported uh, employees are more likely to enable positive customer experiences. Um, empathy is a key and can help the organizations uh, build trust and enable a loyal customer base is there. When we are talking about the customer experience, it reflects the employee experience uh, and the many organizations uh, they struggle with the disconnect uh, between the business leaders and the employees which creates a, a, a silent culture. So, if uh, leaders make uh, this decision uh, um, with, uh, without uh, employee insights, those silos can get worse. So, customer experience professionals must know and ensure business leaders know how it uh, uh, feels uh, to work in their organization. So, when managers uh, understand employee satisfaction levels, they better understand how customers uh, uh, view the organization is there. If a business uh, care for its people and they feel uh, engaged and empowered in the turn, uh, they will care for the customers of that business. Customer experience directly reflects uh, the employee experience. Therefore, the customer experience professionals must hold up a mirror to everyone in the organization and view their strategies, uh, roles and actions as the uh, customers. Uh, employees may also be more uh, apt to the embrace of the customer experience strategy if the customer experience professionals um, can show how these strategies affect the employees individually and where their uh, roles fit into the customer experience. Uh, the value of an engaged and the effective company culture that cannot be overstated, uh, especially in today's uh, competitive recruiting environment, uh, when the 94 percent of the executives and 88 percent of the employees believe a distinct workplace culture is crucial to business success. According to the recent findings from the Deloitte, yet only the 19 percent of the executives surveyed by the Deloitte think that the company has the right culture. Great customer experiences uh, uh, diverse the uh, business growth and the success. Uh, what most companies uh, uh, fall to knowledge is that that is the people behind the delivery of that customer experience must come first. Uh, focusing on the employees uh, is not only the right thing to do, it is good for the business too. When you put uh, employees first, uh, so they will do the right by your customers and the business benefit uh, in the end. Uh, building an employee centric organization has uh, many benefits for the business uh, like for example, the first one is the engaged and the productive employees. So, employee engagement accelerates uh, when the employee experience positive relationships with their direct uh, supervisors and feel that uh, uh, their employer cares uh, about them. Uh, these uh, employees experiences include having a good rapport with their managers, uh, having the right tools to perform their jobs and having the authority and freedom to make work decisions uh, which are some of the 
key elements of an employee centric company is there. Now, when we talk about the reduce these uh, employee turnover as a benefit of these uh, employee centric culture uh, and our enjoyable work environment uh, where the employees are the focus creates a positive uh, employee experience. Uh, happy engaged employees are more likely to stay at their organization longer. On the contrary, a negative experience uh, can prompt uh, an uh, employee to leave the organization abruptly even without another employer. So, these reactions are the results of the unfavorable circumstances, the lack of the flexibility of the perception of being underpaid. Amid the get uh, resignations and with the growing global skills uh, shortages, uh, the organizations uh, must be employee centric to retain the uh, exceptional staff that acts on the business strategy while the also reducing the recruitment costs are there. Now, when we are talking about the happier customers, uh, the take care of uh, your employees uh, and they will take care of your business, uh, said uh, the Richard uh, Branson, founder of the Virgin Group. Uh, when HR and leadership teams uh, create an employee centric workplace, uh, they engage the employees to do a good job with the fair play, uh, right workload balance and the strong company culture. Uh, they stimulate a positive attitude towards uh, in their employees. Uh, the positive attitude is carried over into the, their customer relationships uh, which result in the happy and satisfied customers. Uh, happy customers are more likely to be loyal, promote your products and the services to their friends uh, and family and provide more feedback to help the improve your offers. Uh, so, higher revenues and the uh, return on investment uh, is becoming a very important factor for as a benefit for the employee centric culture. So, compelling and these uh, productive relationship between between the employee experience and the company uh, superior financial performance is there. The study found that is the high performing companies uh, have a very strong focus on the how the employees feel about uh, their organizations. Uh, feeling inspired by the company's mission and the purpose uh, being able to achieve um, their career goals and uh, having a deep trust with the higher management is there. Now, here are the some uh, companies that have incorporated design thinking into their the employee experience. Uh, first, I would like to take the example of these IBM. So, CHRO, uh, D and Gerson used design thinking to improve the company's learning and development programs. Uh, she said that they have taken uh, the Netflix approach. Individuals create uh, their own personalized learning platform with the different channels uh, customized for their role with the intelligent recommendation that are continuously updated. And they are guided uh, by a chat advisor regarding their course selecting as well as the ratings by these colleagues uh, who have studied the course. Uh, on top of that, uh, they also rolled out uh, new promoters uh, that is a uh, scores to evaluate the training effectiveness. Jepos, the companies wanted to create a fun and a unique experience for the uh, fresh hires. In their first month, uh, new staff uh, learns about the company's history, the core values uh, that is uh, delivering the wow customer service and the forming the meaningful bonds uh, within these uh, team via games, activities and the projects. So, corporate trainer uh, there Stephanie, you said that the goal is to build a relationship and ensure the new employees are the comfortable in their role is concerned. So, uh, here we found out how to foster an employee centric culture is there because there are so many benefits are there as we have seen that is whenever you are making the employee centric culture, the employees that they are feeling very comfortable and they are getting the fully engaged and their experience which emerged from this particular the learning at the workplace, uh, it reduces the employees turn over and the employee will not leave the abruptly in any organization and he will like to work in the same organization. So, you know, when we are talking about uh, uh, this such type of the benefits uh, then necessary we have to find out how we can foster. So, work on the your digital employee experience is there. As more organizations are the embracing hybrid or the remote work, uh, people can choose work uh, arrangements in which they can be the most productive. Uh, the uh, management team must have invest in digital tools that support remote and the hybrid work arrangements are there. 
And now after this pandemic, we have seen that this type of the culture that has become the very popular that is the hybrid culture is there. So, earlier uh, we uh, the physical uh, uh, presence uh, was very compulsory. Now, we have seen with the help of this uh, technology, now the employees, many employees uh, may not be the all. I understand that that is all employees or the all jobs will not be like uh, the online, but uh, if possible you uh, to find out that is which are the jobs are there which can be done and the hybrid mode or the online mode. With this in mind, the digital employees experience uh, is becoming a more significant part of your total employee experience. Uh, in managing the projects and workflows uh, uh, here, Trello, Asana, Zapier, collaborating and uh, communicating with the team members uh, that is uh, with the help of the Zoom, Microsoft meetings uh, and accessing the HR services like providing the feedback uh, that is uh, of visible and the others. So, when we are talking about whether uh, it is a time getting these tools are updating your current uh, uh, set, consider how it uh, contributes to an excellent digital employee experience. So, first and foremost is ease of doing whatever Prime Minister of India says that is about the, uh, the create a culture uh, that is the people should feel that is the ease of doing concept. And as a result of which, whether you are going for the entrepreneurship or the small enterprises or even for the large enterprises, uh, the people surrounding to you and those who are working in the, such organizations, uh, they should find that is the ease of use and implementation is there. So, if you are making this uh, the culture where the uh, employees they feel that is this experience of the employees experience that will be really giving a, a big output. And then the boosting the productivity and the efficiency is there. And here we find out uh, that is the uh, when employees are engaged, uh, management is supportive, uh, work environment is friendly, then it will boost the productivity and the efficiencies are there. This standardization of the software uses make sure everyone has access and uses the, uh, uh, the same tools to communicate with the other teams are there. And naturally, it will not be working in the silos or in the uh, isolation rather than they will working in the team. And uh, as we know that is the role of the ICT that is the information communication and technology and therefore, in that case then that, that is becoming the more and more effective communication. So, these mechanisms to collect the feedback before uh, uh, that is a software training and uh, after the uses to this uh, guess if the tools were effective or if there are the better tools, uh, but uh, there moreover the employee centric organizations can also consider the redesigning the physical workplaces to have uh, the more uh, productivity or the effectiveness are concerned. So, when we are talking about this uh, uh, the ask for and the act on the feedback is concerned. So, turn that is uh, talking about the feedback organizations need to solicit the feedback from employees to learn what is and what is not working at the organizations. Now, in whether you are using the aviation industry services where you are using this uh, um, Zomato or the Swiggy or you are using the Ola, Uber or whatever service industries you are using or you, you are making this uh, particular the product buying, then in all the cases uh, there, there is uh, uh, immediately you get uh, a message for the feedback that is the how was the service. So, therefore, in the case of that is the when we are talking about the feedback from employees to learn. So, here the internal employees, it is not the external customers only. So, employees are also the customers as I mentioned earlier and they are the internal customers. So, therefore, we have to learn that is what is will work in this organization and what is will not work in the organization and the, the employees they are giving the feedback and from that feedback you can understand what the employees want. So, conducting the stay interviews and the exit interviews and the organizing the employees focus uh, groups are the great ways to the hear what your employees have to say. So, ask the relevant questions about your organization's uh, employee experience. Uh, for example, how would you describe the employee experience at this organization? Uh, what employee experience initiatives uh, uh, would you like to uh, in our organization 
to implement and therefore, the answers of these questions uh, that will be supporting. So, because when you are asking them that is a describe the employee experience, uh, so then definitely in that case uh, they will be sharing their emotions, their thought, their principles uh, and their the, uh, working their feelings that is the how they have felt at the workplace and therefore, in that case you will find that will be taken as a feedback and that will help you. So, uh, uh, like for the another questions we can talk about do you feel valued by the organization for what you do? Now, every employee he wants to add the value. So, value addition to the my work right that is the basic purpose is there because everybody does the work, but uh, some employees only they are able to put the value into their work is there and rest of the uh, people they work because that work has to be completed. So, that is a part of the source of earning. So, therefore, in that case their involvement their engagement is not there. So, uh, here when you talk about that is the value addition, um, you must have heard about the Akbar Birbal stories uh, uh, that is about the king and his ministers, uh, how the, their communication interaction and the problem solving was there and therefore, the, the, that is giving these uh, the job, job of the minister that is a Birbal uh, was adding the value to the, his job. So, what could the organization change to improve the employee experience is there. Now, organization has to create that culture, organization has to create that uh, uh, experience and therefore, when employee experience is there uh, and uh, your ap approach is uh, the employee centric uh, uh, experience, then definitely in that case you will find that is the you are able to perform. So, on a scale of 1 to 5 uh, may be nowadays we are talking about the scale of 7 or 5, 7 and uh, how would you rate your employee experience with our organization and then they, they will be giving this response may be at the time of this uh, exit interview even or may be at the time of promotions or increments or any section where the interaction is there and their feedback becomes very, very important. So, we can take that feedback and then we can see that is the where the organization is leading. If you find that is the organization is having the satisfactory feedback then that is perfectly fine. If the employees are suggesting something then definitely that experience employee experience that is to be taken into the consideration whether it is a positive or it is a negative. Now, when we are talking about the foster the psychological safety, so when asking for this uh, feedback uh, it is essential that is the employees feel they can speak up the without worrying about uh, being punished or the humiliated. Now, there are two aspects are there, one aspect is the exit interview. And then you are asking for the employees that is the when they are leaving how they are finding uh, this particular organization and what is your experience is there. Another is they are continuing the work and this is very important. Now, getting the fair feedback from an employee who is working how he can say about anything wrong about his uh, supervisor and uh, even he wants to mention, but he will not he will never mention that. So, by promoting the mutual respect leading to examples with the active listening and the fostering these uh, uh, the DIB creating a psych, uh, psychologically safe environment uh, and that is uh, no there, there your supervisor will not get angry, it will not affect your interpersonal relationship with your supervisor and their responses will be kept confidential when they answer the employee surveys. So, if you can have a third party vendor conduct the survey to the uh, the people's fears of being the identified on survey. So, uh, uh, here, but my suggestion is this that is it is to be done by these uh, internal anonymously this uh, survey has to be done. So, that will give the real picture. So, provide a safe space for the employees to feel comfortable contributing to the conversation any any references to the actual people should be uh, that is the re removed. So, that the, there is no identity is there about an employee who has given the feedback. Improve your total uh, 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 the reward strategies and therefore, design a reward strategy and that considers and serves the varied needs of the employees. Now, here I would like to give an example of a bouquet. The rewards, how should be the rewards? Reward should be like a bouquet. Bouquet means there are the different uh, flowers are there and the employee will choose whatever the rewards he finds that is the most suitable for him. The cost for the organization will remain same and this type of the exercise has been given in the Stephen P. Robbins book on the after the end of the chapter that is the motivation. You can refer that and then can find out that is uh, how to motivate the employees and therefore, 
customized customized motivation strategy is very, very important is there. You cannot generalize by the age demographic variables like the age and gender and the economic conditions and the earning per month salary and all that is okay this will motivate the person. Many times people feel that is um, only money can motivate the person, but this is not true for all maybe for many but not for all. So, another potential situation the people uh, uh, resigning because they want more work life balance. And therefore, in that case, uh, if uh, you are not given even in the any monetary rewards, but you are giving them the time to spend with their families. So, by, by allowing employees to work remotely or have flexible working hours, uh, you give them the more time to focus on their personal lives are there. So, they can maintain their family lives are there. Now, if the, you find it is the employees are leaving because lack of the learning and the development options. Uh, so, your renewed uh, uh, total reward strategy might be like this type of the MOOCs courses and where the MOOC courses are easily available and uh, even if the person does not want to spend any money, even then he can register and he can learn the particular courses. So, therefore, the reward strategy, the reward strategies are to be formed in such a way, so that is the employee's experience is very positive and he is happy. So, uh, um, that is the empower and uh, your employees to grow. Now, as I mentioned, it is a, it is not necessary always to give the monetary benefits. The non-monetary is the empowerment is there. A recent survey revealed that the 58 percent of the millennials and the 52 percent of the Gen Z indicated that is having the successful careers depends on the frequent upskilling and the reskilling is there. So, this learning and training and development L and D department plays a very, very important role and the employees across the generations who consistently engaged in learning reported uh, feeling more uh, fulfilled uh, and therefore, when you are making them the uh, upgradation of skills. So, they are accomplished and motivated. So, it is imperative to give your employees the opportunities to learn and grow to support this goal uh, implement a variety of learning and development initiatives such as the peer mentoring, micro mentoring, formal and informal training and the targeted training are there. So, of course, the benefits you, you as an organization to you will retain the top talent and help make your organization more agile and resilient uh, to adjust to unexpected shocks uh, uh, like the worldwide pandemic is there. Now, when your employees are fully equipped, equipment means with the knowledge, skills and then in that case, uh, then whatever the uh, variety of the learning and development initiatives have been taken and an emergency occurs. Uh, like here the example has been given that is the pandemic which was the worldwide was there and then this type of the situation arise, but you know that is your employees in this condition also will be able to work from home. So, therefore, uh, this type of this the peer mentoring and the um, micro training that will be helping the employees to make the better and as a result of which uh, and their, their the learning and learning abilities will create a good experience uh, because they will face less problem. So, during the pandemic those who were able to use the technology, uh, so then they, they were very easily working uh, uh, on their jobs. So, but if they were not trained, l &D department has not taken this care of, then definitely in that case uh, they will be having uh, this type of the issues. So, when planning to, uh, when we are talking about the prioritizing the employee well-being, uh, I have taken the full session on the well-being in the uh, previous session also, please go through that is the employee well-being session, because nowadays that is becoming a very, very important uh, um, concern for by the employer towards the employee. So, when planning to improve the employee's well-being, you need to consider the multiple aspects of the well-being such as the physical, mental, emotional, financial and uh, then start with these uh, uh, that is a researching uh, initiatives that you can implement to boost the employee well-being. Again, it is essential to first address the most uh, possessing needs of your employees are there. So, um, always we talk about that is what are the needs are there, needs then it will go to the wants and then it will go for the desire. 
So, this in a hierarchy first we have to understand what is the physical need is there and in the physical need uh, we, we, we see that is the uh, it is required to be the minimum uh, uh, that uh, ergonomics I have talked about the ergonomics that is the structure uh, and the light uh, and these uh, other uh, physical environmental conditions they are making this so comfortable. So, employee is able to make this uh, 100 percent output is there. Similarly, the mental well being is there. So, person is required to be the healthy and mentally if he is healthy he will be able to perform. Now, when we talk about the three wheel framework of the customer centricity, uh, we are now living in a uh, world where the customers uh, have more uh, choices than ever before and the organizations face the challenges of distinguishing themselves from the dozens of the nearly identical providers, products, services are there. So, here it, it is very important that is the what we learn and that is the uh, organizations uh, the key and then I have to also talked about the organizational learning. So, organizations have to constantly learn and adoptive a customer centric approach uh, and that is the one approach to taking this uh, test for the organizations. So, what is customer centricity? Customer centricity refers to the strategy of the putting the customers front and the center in the organization strategy and the activities and always. So, the customer centric organizations are designed from the outside in defining who is my customer, what they care about and, and, and uh, mind it that is your, um, your employees are also your customers and uh, how they interact uh, with the organization. It, it is the customers experience that can align the organization uh, internally and your organization becomes strong and uh, you are because your employees they are having the very positive experiences there. Now, I would like to explain this three wheel framework of the customer centricity. So, the three wheel framework of the customer centricity talks about know your customers, take key actions and the build key insights are there. So, very important is the customer segmentation, personal and customer experience. You should know who are your customers and then definitely your actions uh, that should test the card and, and uh, take the key actions which are relevant relevant to your customers and uh, as a result of which what will happen you will be able to build the key insights are there. So, a value proposition canvas because the you want to keep your customers happy. So, therefore, in that case those learning cards and the dependence analysis that will be making very important. For example, uh, like I talked about the when you are talking about the you know your customers it is a persona customer experience and the map is there. When we are talking about the customer segmentation, so it is a process of the category the customers into groups based on the common characteristics so that the organizations can uh, service them more effectively. So, organizations with the capability to obtain the structured data about their customers may wish to use a more sophisticated analytical approach to define their customer segmentation. However, a simple exercise of identifying and the grouping similar customers uh, uh, together may also serve this purpose is there. Whenever we are talking about the persona, so it is an approach in the structuring and understanding of the customer in a simple uh, then uh, digestible format. So, you usually create a one persona for the each customer segment uh, and that will be quantifiable also demographic information also likes, wants, behavior, fears all the information will be there, ethnographic information will be also there. So, social stimuli that influence the behavior and the patterns of the customers are there. Then customer uh, experience map is there. Now, you see when you are having the proper history then in that case through journey uh, whatever the journey you are having with that particular customers uh, that will describe a customer general experience with a particular process like the uh, what the customer gives the donations, how the customer behave, how the customer uh, um, is complaints, how is the customer giving the feedback and therefore, that customer uh, the persona will be there. When we are talking about the second wheel and that is about the build the key insights. So, value proposition canvas learning card and dependency analysis which I have talked uh, earlier and that is the uh, how value proposition canvas uh, that will be making the product or services in the organization from the lens of these uh, grain creators from the specific uh, uh, the product or the service create customer gains are there. And therefore, you have to know that is the uh, how your learning card that is um, uh, coming from this uh, know your customer phase. It is usually comprised of the hypothesis we believe that uh, in observation we observe that a key learning that is a point we learn data and an action plan therefore, that we will learn. 
So, this is a de dependency analysis between the learning points and the elements of this current business model that is the supplier, delivery, channel, technology, etcetera is there. The third and the last wheel is uh, uh, that is about to take the key actions are there and therefore, in that case uh, uh, in the uh, third uh, uh, whatever the progress board is there to enable the effective tracking is there. So, you have to take the testing the activity and the measurement of the success and as, as a result of which uh, your progress board uh, that is uh, how your performance uh, and uh, that uh, actions are tracked and uh, completed very appropriately. So, here uh, this customer expense strategy are the long term investments are there and when employees understand that is the customer experience and its potential benefits, they are more likely to be on board with the strategy and help the facilitate more positive customer experience in the long term is there because that is making the professional the adopting the new technologies to enable the positive experiences there. Whenever we are talking about this uh, the experience centric, so these five steps customer oriented, journey oriented, customer centric, experience oriented and experience centric is there. So, uh, here we find out that is the whenever organization starts with the customer orientation and then the journey starts uh, and uh, we are making the strategies policies uh, and experiences seen as uh, that is the customer centric is there. Whenever you are making these customer centric strategies, the experience of the customer and the debt can be seen as a very highly positive is uh, there and it has become the key success factor. And this experience centric uh, which is uh, making the uh, alignment uh, for the customers then organization imperatives are there. So, uh, these five steps to become the experience centric uh, and uh, is both a sprint uh, and, a ma and, and the uh, ma marathon. So, it can be sprint in the beginning because the quick wins are possibly by taking a journey and the customer focus are there. So, a customer centric organization when we are talking about a structure then it is becoming the experience, the customer's experience, experience of the fulfillment, uh, the experience enablers uh, which you have to create uh, and the experience structure which, which will create the experience DNA that is the heritage, mission, values and the brand is there. So, uh, this structure of the experience centric organizations uh, delivery around the will you go the most strategic the will becomes there therefore, ensuring that strategic decision are made from a customer experience perspective as there. The will uh, that is the revolves around the experience DNA of your, our organization which becomes a strategic resource for the whole uh, your organization and it is main building work is there. And uh, this is the research paper making sense of the customer service experiences a text mining review and the purpose of this paper is to systematically review the concepts and the theories understanding the customer service experience and it is underlying the five dimensions physical, social, cognitive, affective and this uh, uh, sensorial is there. So, in this research the contribution of the sensorial dimension to the customer's experience research emphasize and that seems are the especially important in forming the, uh, the perception within this uh, uh, service caps that are the typically uh, rich in the sensory stimuli is there. So, this paper will be giving you the much uh, detailed idea about that is how customer experience that is making your organization more effective. This is the book uh, customer centricity is there and uh, written by the Peter S. Feder and which will be helping you to understand that customer relationship management and organization to make sure you are focused uh, directly on the needs of the your most valuable customers and increase the profits by the long term are concerned. These are the references which you can refer for your the further uh, detailed readings which will be giving you the understanding of the different uh, initiatives for the employees experience and the customer experience is a concern and uh, the better is the customer experience uh, better is the organization's health is there. Thank you.